Alex, everybody. Let me see if I can just find this event myself. Uh, there it is. Um, right, we're going to talk about um, some questions. I put some questions out to Twitter and Facebook today. Bear with me. I'm just going to do something to this feed. Uh, it's always a slow start on a live, isn't it? I'm sorry. I'm just uh, using a slightly different system and I'm trying to learn how to use it. So, yeah, I've asked what are your biggest golfing questions after the weekend of you playing golf. Um, and um, you've all been kind enough to send me some. So I'm up new Mark, Tim. Hello, Tim. Oh, cool. I'm getting some of the comments coming through there as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to answer some of your questions just quickly, just lunchtime. Um, normally, obviously, do these recorded, but we'll do these today. Just a little bit of fun with some um, uh, with some questions asked. I actually need to just bring my questions up. So here we go. First question is here, which you will see and I don't see yet. So I'm going to find it on here. Um, how can I make the game more enjoyable for my mate who's just taken up golf and who is topping it and fatting it around the course? Let's get stuck in Adam Wells. Hello. Um, that is a good question. I think that's the question I've put up there. Um, let me check. It is. Yes, it is because I don't see it as clearly as you. First thing for him, he's got to get lessons. There's no point going around. I mean, if anyone watched our left-handed golf ideas, um, hopefully some of you did watch the left-handed golf stuff. Um, we were working it out as we were going along. You could see us trying to work out how to get the most out of our game as we went. If we weren't pros and able to do that, then, um, you know, for me, I'd have gone and asked questions, gone for lessons, gone and asked questions, gone and found those answers. So absolutely get in lessons at that early stage and get rid of, find out the reasons why you're topping and duffing it. And then obviously um, that then allows you to really progress onwards. And for me, what we kind of hinted at in the left-handed video allows us to really, that's the enjoyment I'm getting from doing something like golf, is it's the learning. It's that process of learning and um, that process of uh, trying to develop my skills and not let it beat me that is the fun bit. It just happens to be during golf that we're doing it. Good question. Hope that helps um post in those comments down below let me know what you're having for lunch um today i think we're gonna have salmon today it's a bit of a daddy day today um right next question let's find it is it this one yes it is why the hell i hit it so well saturday and yet sunday i couldn't draw the ball stephen gibson good question such an interesting question and one I think that will never, ever really go away. Um, it's such a um, common, common question that just, you know, I, I just will keep getting repeated over and over again. Just give it a go. Here we go. I've got my driver with me. It's a TS3, if you're wondering. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, let's think. Let's pretend I'm hitting everything... Club path into out face one degree, two degrees close to that club path. So I am getting little draws on lots of lots of shots. Okay, I'm just going to remove this because it's right over my face under the description. Let's go wide as well. Um, and day one, I hit them out in the middle, all slightly out of tone. Okay, that's going to give you nice draws. And as you move further away from the toe, it's actually going to make it draw even more with those numbers. So the numbers are going to complement where you're hitting it on day one. Day two, you apply exactly the same numbers into out, face one degree close to the path, two degree close to the path, pretty much the same numbers, but you hit everything centered at a slightly heel. That's going to produce very different shape shots to day one, even though you feel like you're swinging exactly the same. And that millimeter change in strike is going to make huge difference, but you're not going to feel like you've made, you're not going to feel the difference in the millimeter difference in, in delivery in your swing you'll feel it maybe impact but you ain't gonna feel like you've really swung the club any differently and you're gonna go day one and day two which are going to be completely different this is the most common um 
reoccurrings that I get from students. Often when I go out, well, when I'm doing lessons on the course and in the studio, what's your bad shot? I say to people, or oh, I fade it and I draw it. Well, they miss hit, fade it, and they hit it well, draw it. That's the common theme that I see. So I see them um, not working in the miss hit, comparing it to the same as the good hit, but putting them on the same bracket as comparison and they're not the same shots, basically. Good question. We'll move to the next one. Let's just see what the comments are saying. Uh, why is Coach so inconsistent with his driver? He struggles to control the face. Then he doesn't play much. And then the face is even harder to control. Bagel egg sandwich for Daniel, bruh. Good one. Uh, TS3, bruh. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, morning all protein shake for breakfast from Marty. Okay, Marty, thank you. Uh, thanks, Josh, I agree. I'm playing with a bunch of friends and don't have the option to play two 18s at different courses that day. Conflicted. I'm not actually to something else. Uh, that indeed, that's indeed interesting. One day you be birdie, par, 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 etc. Handicap one or two day. You struggled to get 14 points in nine holes around. Yes, Richard, that's very, very common. The other thing as well, which people never work in, we see it so much on our course vlogs. People miss hit one on the target. So I see Rory doing it a lot. Like he, he necks it, so he applies numbers that should make the ball dead pull. But he doesn't hit it out in the middle, he then hits it out of the heel and it cuts back the target. And he, I mean, he does a bit because he plays with us a lot, but he's working that in as a good result stroke, good shot, but it's not the next shot. He does exactly the same delivery and the face, uh, and he sits it say out the middle. And that's just a straight pull at speed and that ball's going 40, 50, 100 yards left. Sometimes strike helps you as much as it can hurt you. Right, should we have another question? Um, this is a very similar idea, actually. This one, let me just find it, is this one. Here we go. Hopefully you're seeing that there. Why do I hit the ball arrow straight one day and a massive cut the next day? No, literally day to day. So for Shane, it's exactly the same principles. You will find the biggest variation you will be having is your strike on the face, your delivery. I, I haven't taught many people over the many years I've taught who deliver very different numbers swing to swing. You get the odd few who deliver, you know, out to in club path, face opens a path, then the next shot out to in club path, face closed path, then the next one into out club path, different face, next one into out club path and a different face again. That tends to not happen at all. Um, what you see is very similar deliveries out to in phase open to the path or into out phase close to the path. One sided club face miss, so the face is a little bit too more closed or a little bit too much open, but then the strike varies and then that's where we see the shots vary. So very much the same idea with that one. Uh, so those two questions I picked then because they were so similar. Any videos coming up with your putter change? Yes, James, they will be very, very soon. If you're struggling with your swing, can slowing down the backswing make it worse? Paul Brunt. Yes, Paul. Absolutely. It's another thing to think about. I always say to golfers, you know, you've got loads to think about in your golf swing. Changing how fast you swing or what you feel is your tempo, all those kind of ideas, is just yet another thing. Unless you're controlling face to path, then playing with speed can be a little uh, confusing for many. Um, do you put much stock in tempo, Mark? Will Broadbridge? No, not really. Um, it's one of those golf myths that I see people still try to teach, but there you go. I'm kind of getting, let them get on with it, I think. Um, right, next question, last question. I like this one. This one's a great question. Just a quick lunchtime fix question and answer today. If you like it, if you do like it, hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button down there as well if you haven't already. Dan Gore, why is it more, why is it no matter what I do with my hybrid, I always draw stroke hook is his question. And what a great question that is. Got one here. Got my, what have I got here? My 23, my rinky dinks here. Um, and this one for me is generally a bit more of a drawy club um, now hybrids by default are more upright in their lie which will make the club sit this way if you've got loft on your hybrid then that face will point more left than you think it is like hitting a ball from an up ball above your feet lie basically 
Um, so hybrids, general rule, they are more upright than say your irons and driver and everything else, which is why they have this little bit of a tendency to have a built in draw. If you think about the mass market buying hybrids, it tends to be that 200 yard shot club, which is more cutty. So building in a bit of draw to them is kind of good for people who want a little bit of help, which they're meant to do in that distance. The trouble is you get someone who's drawing it, then it might, if anything, add to a little bit of extra draw. So what I would advise um, is, let me just change this. You can see the camera's moving around. I'm just gonna take the follow off a little bit here. Hopefully that helps. Um, what I will, what I find is that um, using the neck sleeve, you can up the loft or down the loft, which then in turn will make the face sit a little bit more open, a little bit more closed. So for people who get a little bit drawery in their hybrids, let me think about this, get this the right way around, I would tend to go um, more loft, loft down, which then I think, I'll have, I, I'm thinking on the fly, I think that slightly opens it. Yeah, less loft, lofting up turns it in a little bit, uh, more loft, lofting down will tend to push it maybe to sit half a degree, 0.25 of a degree more open. Um, that might be a better option if you find that you are a little bit over drawery in your hybrids. Then in turn playing with the lies. The other thing as well, depending on the lofts you've got, it's like a wedge. The more lofted you are with your hybrids, then they're, they're, they're basically they're a little bit easier to draw. People might move their angle of attacks a little bit more down because they feel like they're going to go up. That can push path a little bit more to the right. I'm a bit more of a sweeper with my hybrids, but you give me my 23, I feel like I can draw it much more than my 19. This is why you hear the commentators sometimes say much easier for the players to draw a free wood than a driver, even though that's not always strictly true. That's built around their feelings of what they can do with that loft as well. So it does have some truth to it. And lots of people, when they say that, I get loads of tweets of people asking me, well, they said that, what about deep plane, those kind of things. So it, it, how people react to loft is the bigger key. There we go, that's a lunchtime fix. Um, thanks for all your questions, I had loads. I just picked some of the most relevant I thought. Uh, love the videos, Mark, Adam Wilson, thank you, Adam. When you when would you recommend a player getting fitted for a set of clubs, Danny? Um, when you're out there playing, as soon as you get out playing um, and you've got some questions of why your equipment performs the way it does, maybe book a lesson and then in turn a fit as well. They can be the same thing. Um, so pretty quick on. Is getting, club, is getting fit for clubs any help if you are inconsistent at striking the ball? Benno, 1202. Yes absolutely um because it's um again if you use it as a lesson you can find out why you're inconsistent hitting the ball and a good fitter will tell you that it's the clubs and if it isn't the clubs they'll tell you you know it needs it's it's your swing we can only do this with the clubs we need to think of your swing so think of them for me as the same thing post in the comments what you're having for lunch let me know if you like the live um lunchtime fix um if you did um, I'll do more of them and answer more of your questions. So let me know in those comments down below. Thanks as always for watching. See you all next time on another lunchtime live fix. Why is golf so hard? Well, it just is.